My name is Oliver Cook. I'm a curator of horology here, and welcome to my corner. So this clock drew me to it because it's just a bit different to the normal long case clock of the period. It's a night clock and it's what it does, it has an oil lamp or would have had an oil lamp behind the dial here and the light would shine through these pierced numerals and enable the time to be read at night which is very important because back in 1675 or so when this was made you, you couldn't just switch on the light like we can now. You'd need some other way of giving you the time if you needed it. Well, these clocks were very rare. Perhaps for one reason for that was because naked flames inside wooden clock cases were a bit, not a very good mix. Perhaps too, too good a mix if you look at it like that. And there's perhaps four or five of these clocks left, four or five English night clocks left. First thing we need to do, I think, is open the trunk door here, put a key in. We have inside the clock, we have the driving weight. There's a lump of lead that starts up here at the start of a week and over the course of the week descends through the clock until it stops, until it hits the floor or the, or the line runs out. So that's where the energy to drive the clock is coming from. And behind it here, swinging in a very small arc because this clock's worn out and tired, is the pendulum and that's keeping the time, this regular beat, this swing, it's swinging left and right once a second and that's the job of the pendulum. So what I'll do now is lift the hood and we'll have a closer look at the dial. So this typically, this is a typical arrangement for, the, for a clock of this period. In fact, we call this solar case a rising hood case because the hood rises. And now we have access to the dial. And now I can get my winding key, which is conveniently held on a hook inside the clock. This isn't an original winding key, I should add it, but it's a, it fits. So just to show you what happens when I wind the clock, so I place the key on this square at the bottom of the dial and I turn and you'll see as I turn the weight rising and I won't wind it all the way today but when this weight's at the top it'll take about a week, eight days to get to the bottom. Here we have nine so we know it's nine o'clock on something but if we can actually each one of these divisions around the edge here is one minute so we have 0, 15, 30, 45, and these notches are the minutes, and the numeral appears here at the new hour. So here the clock is showing 9.44. And if I want to set the time, I stick the key on this square, and I just simply turn. And as I turn, you'll see the 9 disappear, and on the left-hand side, the 10 will appear. And that is what we call a wandering hour dial because the hour wanders up and over during the course of an hour. So now we've taken the moot mechanism out of the case and brought it to the table so I can show you a few interesting things about it. And the first thing to show you is what we have behind the dial here. If I switch our oil lamp back on and bring it behind the dial, you see the numerals lighting up nicely. But what we have here is this ugly contrivance, which is simply a bit of tissue, red tissue on a hanger. And what you may have noticed, as soon as I took that out, you'll be able to see the light directly behind the numerals now. So there's a diffuser there, which originally I would imagine there would have been some red silk, probably glued to the back of the dial plate here. Now what I want to do is sh show you behind, we'll turn the movement round and I'll turn the oil lamp off. First of all you see the movement the mechanism is contained behind this brass plate and what I want to do now is to give you an even better idea of how it works. You just to pop the dial off the mechanism and you'll see exactly what's happening. It's worth looking at because it's ingenious. So now we'll do that. Put that aside. And now what you can see here is uh, the numerals on a chain. So as our clock proceeds, you'll get a better idea of how it works now. You have all 12 numerals, one to 12, on this chain. 
and each consecutive number is spaced five apart so as the disc comes round it brings the numerals up with it and that's how the system works ingenious and there we go that's the wandering hour dial and the beautiful night clock by Edward East if you want to see this clock it's on permanent display in gallery 39 the clocks and watches display where we have 88 watches 100 or so clocks and it's definitely worth a visit please do